So yeah, Lucasfilm and Disney just acknowledged Jar Jar Jar. I mean, yeah, we're really, really turning into a new chapter, a new era for Star Wars because Jar 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 was practically non-existent. It was denied and denied and now it's been mentioned. This is a big step, even though it is not canon, of course, but the very mention of Darth Jar Jar in a fictional universe of Lego Star Wars is something really important. In that trailer of Lego Star Wars Rebuild the Galaxy, I mean, it was pretty interesting, and to see what's the plans for that film, it got me pretty much excited, me and a lot of fans, from Jedi Bob to now even Darth Jar Jar at the end. They even mention him by name, and he talks, Darth Jar Jar talks. He steps out of a black Millennium Falcon wielding a red lightsaber. I mean, it couldn't be more fan fiction than this, and it reminds me, of course, of my fan fictions I made years ago, and I really think sometimes I let the fans down. I know I let you guys down and myself too because I really enjoyed and loved doing that story. I had a complete arc planned out of multiple episodes. These are the two that you're watching right now. The two fan fictions that I posted it was part one and part two and it divided the empire completely with Palpatine dead. Darth Vader became a king. Darth Jar Jar became an emperor superseding Emperor Palpatine. It was just perfect. The story was mapped out so that it would make sense and give the fans what they wanted so much with a Darth Jar Jar timeline, but yeah, it really reminded me of that. I I went back and watched those videos again, and it just seemed completely nostalgic. I was in a completely different mindset back then, man. Headspace is really important. At, at the time, and right now, it's totally two different people. But I'm guessing you guys want to actually discuss Darth Jar Jar more, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about what actually brought to this moment where Star Wars Lucasfilm, Lego Star Wars, officially acknowledges and mentions Darth Jar Jar in their trailer for their newest film. Okay, so back in the day before The Force Awakens, this was about 2014-15, the Darth Jar Jar theory was first posted by Redditor Lumpawaru, who went on to actually make great points throughout the prequel trilogy. It kind of kind of give us signs that Jar Jar is not that bumbling buffoon that we all think of him. It actually, for me, I remember when reading those and going back and watching the prequels, it gave me a completely different view, a perspective that I hadn't really watched The Phantom Menace before. And perhaps my brain did pick up some signals here and there. But when you watch it after watching this theory, it is one of those speculations that changes the whole landscape for you. Because it, of course, gave us an indication that Jar Jar was a secret Sith or a force user at the very least. His his jumping abilities, his fighting techniques, the fact that he was always lucky at times, it seemed lucky, but apparently he was using the force, similar to how Jedi throughout the Star Wars trilogies used the force to dodge blaster fire, to dodge lightsaber attacks, and the main fact of it all, he helped the Sith, aka Chancellor Palpatine, to get emergency powers. In front of everybody, this dude, Jar Jar, helped the Sith ascend to power and destroy the Republic, therefore destroy the Jedi Order. If you take it as a fact, Jar Jar is in its entire time on screen is literally helping Palpatine. He was the first one who made a secret connection with Anakin. He was the one who essentially started the whole Anakin Chosen One movement because of him. Qui-Gon took notice of Anakin, brought him to Coruscant to train him. Qui-Gon died. Then Palpatine years later would take Anakin as his apprentice. There's so much going into this that Jar Jar was from afar in the background was a main cog into the storyline of the prequels, how Chancellor Palpatine became Emperor Palpatine and how Anakin became Darth Vader. This is one of the greatest shots ever where he is convincing the entire Senate to give emergency powers to Palpatine and you see him waving his hands around to the entire Senate, meaning that he might have used a mind trick essentially on all of these people to manipulate them into giving Palpatine emergency powers, which they actually do. There's also the ring theory, which makes a compelling case that George Lucas, with his It's Poetry, It Rhymes line, 
he wanted to essentially rhyme the prequel trilogy with the sequel trilogy in that the Yoda storyline will be flipped into the Jar Jar storyline at this point, where similar to Yoda, Jar Jar would be a bumbling buffoon at the beginning, similar to how Yoda tried to manipulate Luke, and then suddenly flip. I mean, Jar Jar, with his whimsical and annoying sense of humor at times, was supposed to be, in fact, an inversion of Master Yoda. The apparent fool is actually a master wizard. Similar to Yoda, Jar Jar was supposed to be this time around the same guy, but serving the Sith. Even Robot Chicken picked this up at long ago. I remember watching this clip where they made fun of Palpatine thinking that the fool Jar Jar gave him powers only for Jar Jar to reveal to us in the end that it was all part of his grand scheme, of his grand plan. And this was picked up by George Lucas himself, by the plan originally laid out for Ahmed Best who played Jar Jar. Because Ahmed Best, believe it or not, gave it in interview to Entertainment Weekly years ago, where he actually talked about a deleted scene featuring Jar Jar. He went on to say, in Revenge of the Sith, there was a scene that was cut where I'm walking down a long pathway with Ian McDermott before he is turned into the Emperor, meaning that Jar Jar is walking along with Chancellor Palpatine. So Ahmed Best went on to say, Palpatine kind of thanked Jar Jar for putting him in power. Now this is a very dark moment because it goes from showing Jar Jar from fan to menace as this buffoon into a politician who actually acted in the favor of Chancellor Palpatine. And who knows, during that scene, there might have been a cut where Chancellor Palpatine thanks Jar Jar, walks away, and we see a sinister look from Jar Jar before it cuts to a completely different environment, meaning that we will never know. Of course, this theory was so great that it actually destroyed the whole Snoke-Jar Jar thing, where everybody was convinced Snoke was either Mace Windu or Jar Jar and it's gonna be revealed in The Force Awakens, but the legacy is is definitely there. Now, years, decades later, we see that the Darth Jar Jar thing is actually real. It became real through, again, Lego Star Wars might be fan fiction for some, but the mere acknowledgement of this dark sinister character by Lucasfilm in collaboration with Lego does give you an indication as to they have heard the fans, and sometimes the fans are right. Sometimes the fans do deserve acknowledgement, and, I re and I'm really happy that Darth Jar Jar is now not a canon thing, but a thing in Star Wars. Meaning that it might not just stop here, but this might be a gateway to a lot, lot more important stuff. Like, for example, the resolution of Darth Revan, Darth Bane. There's a lot of other characters, especially talking about the Old Republic, that are sort of nebulous when it comes to the canon storyline. So here's to much, much more hopeful ideas, things in the future. But of course, tell me all your thoughts on Darth Jar Jar down below. I'd love to hear you and talk to you guys too.